Hello everyone, this is the first video on my basic CMBS model. In this short series, I will outline how the model works, including why VBA is necessary, touch on the sequential and pro rata structure in the senior tranches, as well as the interest only tranches XA and XB, and finally wrap up with how prepayment and default affect the bond level cash flows. This video will have a lot of verbal explanations, with the following videos delving into the technical aspects of the model, including the VBA amortization engine. To build this model, I read the prospectus for a Wells Fargo deal, pulled the loan tape from said prospectus, and mimicked the payment structure found within the prospectus. I know the model works as intended because the yields from each tranche are the same as the approximate yields found in the prospectus within about 50 basis points. In most ways, this CMBS model is more sophisticated than the previous RMBS model I built. The CMBS model values each tranche and includes VBA to generate cash flows. However, unlike the RESI model, this one doesn't have interest and principal accruals. The reason I didn't include accruals is because the prospectus didn't reference what occurs during interest and principal shortfalls, or more specifically, after interest and principal shortfalls. To check the model's accuracy by comparing my model's yields with the projected yields found within the prospectus, I couldn't include accruals. So if a tranche doesn't receive interest for a period, that's considered a loss without the option to recover that interest shortfall. You may also notice that there are far fewer inputs in this model than in the RESI model. That is for two reasons. First, a lot of the work takes place in the VBA cash flow module. So a lot of the inputs are behind the scenes. Second, the CMBS loans are all fixed rate, so the caps and floors which work to regulate the floating rate aspect of the RESI model aren't necessary here. Jumping into the control panel, we have date and timing inputs, all of which are standard. The entire deal runs off 30 over 360 interest calcs, so that aspect of the model is hard-coded. Next, the pool level assets. There are several ways to build a structured finance model. But regarding cash flow generation, you can either apply losses and prepayments using curves or apply them independently and individually to each loan and underwrite every loan and try to forecast prepayments and defaults loan by loan. Because this model is purely for educational purposes, my model applies curves. Taking a look at the curves, you can see that there are prepayment curves and default curves. Both work the same way. The pool balance will be reduced by a set percentage every month, either through prepayment or default. In the loan tape, you can see how the model controls prepayment and default using a flag, which is controlled through the control panel. Default or prepay flag one is the first curve and so on. Of course, defaulted loans don't necessarily result in complete losses of principal as there is the chance for recovery of, rec of collateral. So here in column AN with ID 40, you can see a recovery rate. With a recovery rate of 30%, when a portion of the pool defaults, 30% of that principal is recovered later on. Now that principal isn't recovered instantly. The legal process of principal recovery takes a while, so a recovery lag is built in as well. Let's say that we bump up defaults by 20%. Pay attention to the balances at maturity and which tranches are getting paid down. Immediately, we see that the B tranche has remaining balance. And all of the tranches are getting paid off later, if they're getting paid off at all. On a theoretical basis, the pay down of a tranche's principal and therefore bond cash flows is extremely sensitive to when default occurs. If 10% of the pool were to default in the first year, that would have a much larger effect on the bond cash flows than if 10% of the pool were to default in the ninth year. Regarding why the B tranche now has principal remaining, remember that subordinate tranches are paid principal after senior tranches. So when default occurs, it's the subordinate tranches which are primarily affected. Next, we have servicer inputs. When a loan is delinquent, the master servicer has the ability to advance payments on behalf of the borrower. Of course, the trust must later reimburse the master servicer. If we wanted to be more conservative, we would assume that the master servicer will not advance delinquent payments. Regarding fees, these are subtracted from pool level payments. For example, if a loan is in special servicing and then defaults, 
and is then liquidated, only 99% of the liquidation proceeds will return to the trust. 1% is kept by the special servicer as a fee. The trust must also pay other kinds of fees. These fees are shown in columns 27, 28, and 29. In the RESI model, fees were subtracted from the post-default and prepayment amortization. But because this CMBS model amortizes each loan individually, applying fees to the post-amortization cash flows wouldn't be accurate, right? Every loan can have its own distinct fees. So as a shortcut for the VBA amortization engine, I subtracted fees from the gross mortgage rate to find the net mortgage rate with which loan payments are calculated. Okay, last note on the control panel for right now. If you take a look at the senior tranche graph, you can notice that the A3 tranche as a percentage of senior debt jumps around month 61. That's due to how senior debt pays down. To make things easier to follow, I added key information from the prospectus to this key terms tab. Regarding how senior debt is paid, you may assume that because this is a structured finance deal that all of the tranches pay down sequentially. And that is mostly true for the principal. But in this case, senior tranche interest actually pays down on a pro rata basis. I added the exact language here. With respect to priority first, distributions of interest among class A1, class A2, class A3, and class ASB certificates will be made on a pro rata basis in accordance with the respective amounts of interest distributable. And B, distributions of principal, if and when applicable, generally will be made first to to class A as B in an amount necessary to reduce the principal balance of each certificate to the class A as B planned principal balance identified on Annex 1 of the prospectus. The key point there is that a minimum balance for class A as B must be met before any principal is distributed to other senior tranches. As you can see in column J, there's a planned balance for tranche A as B. This balance was pulled directly from the prospectus. Effectively, what occurs is that after year five, tranche ASB becomes the most senior tranche until enough principal is allocated to reduce its balance down to the pre-planned level, after which principal is distributed sequentially from A1 to G. So going back to the senior tranche graph, the relationship between the senior tranches and tranche ASB is reflected in said graph. Tranche ASB is paid down until right before maturity. Assets becomes the most senior uh, tranche. Then tranches A2 and A3 are paid down first. Then tranche A as B reverts to the most senior piece and is paid down in full. So that covers the basics of the model. Like I said, this video included a lot of verbal explanations, but in subsequent videos, I'll delve more into how the model works on the technical scale.